All right, hello, and welcome back to my real-time strategy in Unity tutorial. Today, we're going to be covering uh, having or sort of, well, basically we've developed an algorithm to find uh, valid building locations within the game world for the AI. So I'll give a quick demo of that input in in the game. So if we just go into the scene view and find that, we can already see that they've started finding buildings. So as we did last time, where we uh, had a, chose random locations for the AI to spawn some workers. So here we spawned here, and as you can see, we're just getting random locations of a random, we're getting locations near to where they've spawned of a random width and height and just marking them out as unwalkable. So that these would be building locations for whatever. And as you can see, that around the buildings, we've got gaps for units to walk through and stuff like that. So yeah, and this will continue going. I think I've got it set to draw like 150 odd, but you can see that the algorithm works and basically that's just what it does. So yeah, let's go see how this works. Okay, so most of the new changes are within the AI building store script that we created last time. So first off, we've added some new variables, or a fair few. Uh, first off is a threaded building location find, which is a new script, which is identical to the threaded pathfinding. It's basically, and it is initialized with a load of, uh, with a location uh, building store that is creating the thread, uh, starting position where we want to build the building there, and width and height of the building, which, uh, we don't need to change actually. Uh, basically, what it does uh, assigns a variable to it, so you can see that. Uh, again, the Boolean is done. We have the locks to make sure that it is only changed by this script at any one time. Or it can't be changed by two things at once so it doesn't get screwed up. Uh, we also have a starting method, which basically just starts the thread for the run method in this class. And then the run method calls the get location. Uh, method which stores which uh, in turn calls the place building method from the my building store uh, scripts which called the for the thread initially which we can do apparently so, uh, we've it's got the x and y coordinates of the position that we want to build the building and the width and height of the building and then stores that on the return list and once the thread is done so once it's done is true we call unfinished, and what we do is we set the my building store dot tiles from thread, which basically is just a list of tiles, to be the value that we got from the return in the return list. So that came from the thread calling my building store dot place building. That made sense. Uh, next up, we've got a again we've got this list of tiles from thread, which is basically the end result of uh, trying to find the location. So this will be the, all the tiles that are for the location. We've got a waiting for location boolean. So again, this is like the uh, identical to the uh, boolean waiting for path in the pathfinding, uh, thread pathfinding. Basically what it says is we're waiting for location. So we'll call, when we call this thread monitor, we're waiting for a location. So basically it'll just check uh, the update from the thread each frame. And if it's true, then it'll do all this code. So if we don't have a thread, uh, if we don't have a uh, list, or if we don't have any tiles in the tiles and thread, it'll assume that it's failed. So it'll just move on to the next building. And otherwise it will say, the waiting for location is false. We found an area for the building. So it'll draw all the tiles red and set them to unwalkable just as a sort of demonstration so we can see where the building has been placed because we don't have actual AI building of buildings implemented yet. And we'll move on to the next building. Uh, potential building location is another script which basically acts as a store for where a building could potentially be placed in the world. So it's got the list of tiles where it would be and a distance from the start, which is just the distance between uh, that initial location that you call with thread. So uh, here, so the starting position and wherever. Uh, and the bottom left tile of the area that it's defined in tiles and lists because that'll be the first tile in the list. 
Okay, and finally, we've got a list, a, const, a new script called the Construction Job Store. I've got a list of them, the, the jobs. Uh, we basically have these as a queue, so that because we can't get more than one building at a time, we store the references to buildings we might want to build. So I'll show you the script. So we've got the workers to the build. So these are, this will eventually be a list of workers that are trying to build this building that the AI selected as being free to do another job. So we'll get the location for the building and then that'll get passed back to these workers and they'll say, I'd be like, do a build building job or something. To them. But that will be done in a later episode because I haven't got it implemented now. For, so for now, it just selects a random width and height value and it gets set with the constructor to a location in the world. And you'll see that uh, these this script and I believe the potential building locations, they don't need the mono behavior import because they don't actually use anything like that. They're just the store essentially. So that should be all right. Okay, so first off, we just got a sort of like a de uh, demonstration read thing. This is just uh, to add a load of random jobs to the queue so we can demonstrate that it can find locations for a building. So that probably won't be in the final one. Uh, first off, we've got a thread monitor, which basically, when we're waiting for a building, it will check if the, we've got a thread. And if we do, if it's done, then it will check. Uh, if we have uh, if the tiles from the thread, if we have, if there are more than what zero, then we have got a thread. So it'll set waiting location, to, waiting for location to false, and then make all the tiles red and set them to walkable. But I think I've already talked about this, so I will stop. If it if it doesn't have uh, any tiles in the list, we'll say all right, it's uh, failed to find the tiles. So we'll switch there. New, we'll just go to the next uh, uh, building order in the queue. Okay, uh, first off, we've got a method for creating a building. It uh, basically just takes a width, a height, and a position in the world. And uh, this is just calls the threaded location get once we have a building there. Uh, this will be switched up to take a, an actual building rather than just a width and a height, just uh, when I actually implement the AI deciding what building to build. Uh, and then it calls this threaded location get method, which basically just uh, creates a new threaded building location find and stores it under tblf. Then initialize it with the appropriate values and starts the thread and says, we're waiting for location, so we've got a thread running currently, so we can't do another one, etc. Okay, uh, now we'll go on to the script that is called from the thread, which is place building. Okay, so for the place building list, we have a our place building method. Uh, we have a potential location list, which is just a list of the potential locations of the like store that I showed you earlier. Uh, what we do is uh, we go through the grid and checks if the tiles at the x and y coordinates specified by x1 and y1 are a valid location for the building with this method here. Uh, the reason we have a x equals 2 rather than x equals 0 and x minus 2 minus width is that we're wanting to get a, a two-tile border uh, around the location where we want to place the building uh, to ensure that we have a, a like a path past the building so we don't block any areas off, which would fuck with the AI. And that is what we have here. That's why we have that here. Uh, and that makes sure that there are no null reference exceptions within uh, when we are searching through the grid. So this add location if valid method, uh, first off, just gets the grid of tiles and then has a list to store the tiles in the area that it finds. And then we'll go through the grid uh, from the X and Y passed into it, uh, from the X minus two, so that will be the uh, left side of the border uh, to x1, is, while x1 is less than x2, x plus 2, sorry. So that will be uh, the border on the right side plus width. It probably make comment. Uh, probably make more sense, actually, if I did plus 2. Plus 2. Yeah, so basically going from 
the x minus 2 to x plus width plus 2 and a similar thing for height to ensure that we've got that uh, we've got an area the size of the building we want and a two-tile border around it. And we basically just store these in a list and then we have a method to check if this list of tiles is valid. So let's go down to that. Uh, basically what it does, it just goes through all the tiles and if either the tile is unworkable or it, the node, a finding node related to that tile is unworkable, it will return false. So that would not be a valid building location. Otherwise it returns true because it is a valid building location. If it is, then it gets uh, all the tiles without the or the tiles without the uh, uh, two tile border around it to be the location where we want to build the building, and adds that to a tiles from building uh, list, and then this list is used to create a potential building location. So it's just assigned here, and then we get the distance from the jobs location in world. So. Normally, uh, for the testing purposes, this is just the uh, starting location of the faction, but you might have, say, a resource or something like that. And then for the potential building tiles, uh, the first tile in the list that get positioned in world. So this uh, first tile in the list will always be the bottom left tile because that is the tile we start with because we're going from X, uh, yeah. Because we're not offsetting it, so we get the center point. So yeah, that is why. And then we add this to the list of the potential locations, uh, which is actually a global variable, not a local one. And we have to declare it as a new list each time, just to make sure that we have a a clean list, no leftover potential building locations. Uh, once it's done that for the entire grid, we then check if we've got more than zero locations. So we have actually found a location. We get the we go through each of them and we try and find the closest possible location. And we if it is uh, the distance between the current one, the current uh, potential location and the closest location is shorter, then we store that. And then once we're done with all the uh, potential building locations, we return it. Don't need that. And if we don't have any locations, we just return a new empty list, which as we saw here, the condition is we can't find an area to place a building if the count is zero. So we set waiting for location to be false and we just try the next one in the queue. And that is how the algorithm works for placing buildings. Uh, we have to have it in a separate fed because although one instance of uh, trying to find a building doesn't take that long, it would cause like a hang of a second while the AI tried to find it, and that's not acceptable. So that's why I have it on a separate thread. I don't think I use these X's in range uh, and references. No, I don't. Uh, that was from a previous implementation that I had, which didn't use uh, multi-threading. But it wasn't as good, so I got rid of it. And that's why. Uh, that's the location for. And now we have a monitor construction job queue. So if we've got a job in the queue and if the uh, threaded building location find is null then we just uh, set the current job to be my jobs the first element in the list and then we call it with the relative well, uh, the information from that job so the width and height and the location in the world but eventually that will be changed to the building and the location in the world uh, then we have a create next building method as well uh, which is not finished at the moment because, again, when we implement uh, actual AI deciding what buildings to build, we will say uh, what to do here. So this will basically just say, all right, we've placed the building at the tile, so we create the uh, unconstructed version. We will get the list of uh, workers that are in the Works to Build store. And we will say, all right, we want you to go and build that building. And then we will remove that job from the building uh, queue because it's been done. And that, since the uh, that's called from the thread monitor, and since waiting for location is false and TBLF is set to null, on the next pass through update, it will say, all right, if we've got another job and if TBLF is not null, or it is null here, we will get the next uh, element of the list. 
or the top element of the list because the previous top element has been removed and we will start that job. Uh, then we got another method to add construct jobs construction queue for positioning world, which again, I'll have to change in the future to have a building to implement and workers that are free to add to it and stuff like that. But that is a job for another episode. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much how my finding a location for a building algorithm works with a little bit of multi-threading. Uh, I'll just give you a quick demo again while I plug my stuff. So see that. So as we can see, uh, we've got a starting position in the top corner here. And you can just watch as it finds locations to place randomly sized buildings. Which might have been a good roguelike algorithm, actually. Damn it, I should have done this for my coursework. Oh well. If you didn't know, I've been I made a procedurally generated roguelike for my uh, coursework, which is out now on a uh, itch.io because I finished it all yesterday. I gave my presentation. It was scary. It was uh, computer science people, and yeah. Uh, also, go check out Loud or Quiet. I've been working on that. Uh, I released a new. Uh, a GUI update and some new weapons, which are physics based. So you can have uh, grenades and molotovs that bounce off worlds and grenade launchers that do the same and all that stuff. So that's good. Uh, yeah, uh, what else? Uh, if you've got any questions, comments, leave it. And if I can answer them, I will. If not, I'll probably just dock them or something or I'll try my best, but whatever. So yeah, uh, that is the result of my building placement algorithm. Just watching and bye.